There you go. I had the pleasure of working with this band 25, 27 years ago, a couple of three times. We became friends, and I love their music, and you're going to love them too, aren't you? They're one of the baddest ass horn bands in all the land. They're here for you tonight. Please give a nice round of applause for the heavy metal horn.
We're just warming up, y'all. Wow. Look at all you out there. This is one of the most beautiful gifts that music can give a bunch of musicians that y'all still come and hang out with us 30 years later. This is the 30th anniversary of the horn section. And we're just honored to be here. We're just so glad y'all came. And it's just awesome. So we're going to get into it now. There's a lot of music coming your way, so get ready.
is just to cover me.
section sounds pretty good for 30 years, doesn't it? <laughs> that song's written by a great Peter Kahlo. Came down from West Chester, New York. The guy who totally helped launch the whole career of this band back in the day. And uh, hey, it's real quick. I want to do just a couple of shout outs and do one right now. You all spread the word about this concert and it was so amazing and helpful, but someone who really shot it out there Meg Griffin from Disorder on the Loft, Sirius XM Radio. Meg's in the house, I can't thank you enough for your interviews and spreading the word and helping us get this thing off the ground. Also Aurelia Nelson from North, North Shore 104.9. They ran it all the time too for the last two months. So thank you Aurelia, thank you Meg so much. You guys helped spread this word. Now we're gonna bring out the guy who wrote all the hits. Well, that's my perspective. Everybody in the band has a different perspective, but. <laughs> He's now a, uh, no, I would never throw you under the bus, man. Are you kidding me? But he's now a professor at the Berkeley College of Music, and uh, he's an amazing musician. You can bring him out, he's gonna do this thing. That is Hogarth. Baby, we 
pressure's getting higher. There's only one thing left to do. What's that? Everybody fall back. To the rhythm. Submission, but in truth and in fact, it is merely a tactical move. You pay the price if you don't make the right decision. You could wind up being on the wrong side of this group. See, rhythm all around. Change position yeah. If you know what's good for you What? Everybody fall back To the rhythm Y'all sing it Come, everybody fall back journey and uh, there's a guy in the house tonight and he's the reason like the horn section got started David G. Amadio. <laughs> David G. Amadio used to run the club Bun Ratties back in the day yeah. right. and on the Sunday night blues jam we all three John and I started hooking up with the wrecking crew on Sundays I met Jared he was like 18 or 19 I said dude we were playing this big band at Brandeis. I was like, man, come down and hang out with us, man. And he came down, 
John Ferry was already a star on the scene with Bim's Gala Bim and Skin. So he came down there, and that's where this all kind of got together. And um, David introduced us to the Del Fuegos. And as a result of the Del Fuegos, y'all heard the story. You know, we went to do the big recording session for their, their last big CD, Smoking in the Fields, and the big Earth Day celebration, which is our first time playing in front of a major audience. It happened to be 200,000 people at the Hat Show for the first Air Day. So we took one of their songs, because every good musician, you know, you got to take a little bit of something. Right? We're going to feature John Ferry on this. And this is a song by the Del Fuegos called Champagne.
Anyway, that's from the, uh, you know, I always believe that if you hear a good song, you should write it, but we had to steal that.
John Matthews, uh, one of the best, seriously. Most amazing vocals I've ever worked with. And of course, Thaddeus Hogarth and that beautiful chromatic harp. You gotta know how to play that thing. Mm -hmm. So, the band is always, I mean, now, this very moment, I'm realizing that we ripped off a lot of people. <laughs> we played with all these people, and while we were there, we found their best rhythm players, and we stole them. We stole everyone. We found their best instrumental tunes, we made them better, and we stole them. We were like Tower of Power, up on the East Coast, when Tower of Power going to a nightclub, the bands would get nervous, because they knew they were coming and looking for somebody. <laughs> So this next song, um, we had the honor to play with one of the great reggae bands out of uh, reggae bands out of Boston, the uh, Itones. Yeah, man. And the Itones had this deal where they were making this record, and somehow Luke was able to uh, corral Maceo Parker to play on top of this tune. This is a true story. So we play with the Itones, and we're like, <laughs> yeah, that's our song now. <laughs> So we took Pepper Pot, this next song, Pepper Pot, and we recorded it. And we did, we did, we gave Mason, we gave Luke his props. So we did the right thing, we did it right. We did, Peter, damn it. And um, so what happened was, two things happened. First of all, we were out on tour out in Redondo Beach, California. We were opening up for Maceo Parker. And we started playing pot, Pepper Pot, and Maceo comes down the stairs like, dude, what? what? Man, I, I know that song's like, yeah, you should, you wrote it, you know? <laughs> it was awesome, he loved it. But when we recorded an album, we got our Japanese record deal, Pepper Pot became a theme song of a TV show over there in, in Japan. So it just really helped us, like shows you, sometimes taking a little bit from somebody and doing something with it can take you around the world.
Jesus, Sam, we love 
Having a good time, still digging this. Thank you. Hey, listen, I uh, really want to introduce the band. I mean, Garrett's rap is, is uh, really special, but you got to be kind of streetwise and be hip to what he's saying. I mean that respectfully. Man, uh, it's, it's unbelievable, all this whole thing that we're all here tonight is so amazing because it's about the music, period, you know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm so honored to have you all out here and all you people we have, people we met at Casting Main, you know, Kevin and Nickel, uh, Booth Bay Harbor in, in Portland with Doug and Sue, and, and guys who came from all over to hang with the band tonight. And uh, so, uh, you, you shout out, go ahead. Give a shout out to my Friday night crew. I know Friday you guys are up there. Yeah, yeah. All of our crews. But down here on the keyboards and vocals, one of the most amazing musicians. He comes from a family of these guys. Everybody in his family was born, and they, when they were born, they could play or sing. And John is amazing on both vocals and keyboards, man. He's also one of the most amazing human beings you could ever meet. John Matthews. John Matthews. Right next to him on guitar, he was instrumental in this band getting off the ground. And, uh, he, heard, he had a lot of connections. He was my, my first mentor as far as how to run a band in Boston many years ago. And he hooked up uh, with Andrea Kuntz, who was the person who booked the club Riles. And he told, he told her, you gotta check this band out. So back at the merchandise table, and you should go check it out, there's a lot of cool stuff back there. He, uh, he got her to come and check out the gig. And on her first CD, she wrote what she felt and saw the very first time she heard the band. 
We did a gig at a downtown crossing on like a Thursday afternoon after work drink party or something. Well, that gig, yeah, we did. But um, that connection led to the famous Sunday nights at Riles with the heavy metal horns. That went on for years. And Jack Riles, who owned all the good clubs in Cambridge, he, he finally, it took me 15 years to get to this guy, and Andrew opened the door and he goes, Hinley, here you got a good band. I'm like, yeah, Jack, the good band's pretty nice. He goes, all right, man, I'll, I'm gonna give you Sunday night. I'm like, oh, thanks, Jack. He goes, I'm only paying you $125. <laughs> I said, there's 10 guys in the band. He goes, I'm only paying you $125. <laughs> and the last thing he says, and, and Hinley, the first night that nobody's in this room, you guys are done. I was like, wow, Jack, I love you too. Thank you so much for the opportunity. But that gig turned into something that lasted like for four or five years and launched us to casting and to all these places around the whole world in the country, thanks to Peter's connection with Andrea and Riles. Peter Kalo, y'all. Amazing. Type his, type his name in the search engine, and he's an amazing musician who works with all the top artists on the scene today out of Westchester, New York. On the percussion. He's from the South Shore. I don't know how a guy from the South Shore, South Shore got in the band, but he got in. He has a thing Hard called work. Bobby, Hick Bobby Hickman and the Sidemen. I think they, they, they're probably like the ruling band on the South Shore right now. The great story about Bobby is one time we were on the road trying to get through gonna tell Texas. That story. I gotta tell. I'm gonna tell, gonna it, tell that story. And we have to go, we have to get somewhere. And we used to drive very, very fast in these two <laughs> vans. I mean, speedometers pinned. And so John was a co-pilot that particular day, and Bobby wasn't going quite fast enough. And Vanderpool we was going like, We were doing 90 dude, miles an hour. Like, Vanderpool was going like, Bobby, man, we gotta get the good. Can you go? He goes, I've never driven a vehicle this fast before. And Vanderpool was like, if you can't handle it, man, just give it up, because we, we gotta go, we gotta get there. And we were all cracking up because Bobby was driving this van almost 95 miles an hour. It was hilarious, man. Another brother of the world, an amazing musician, Bobby Hickman. He did know I love you, man. <laughs> On the drums, he drove out here from Warren, Pennsylvania. Yeah! Yeah, man. Woo! When you talk about hardcore drummers, there's none better than this cat. And he yeah. works, and he's talking about the mu music scene in Warren P. I was like, damn, I should move out there. He plays like five nights a week with all different kinds of bands. I love this guy, man, and he took the gig. We had one drummer who had the gig, Jim Sub, one time said, no, this gig is mine now. <laughs> Give it up for Jim Sturdivant on the drums. <laughs> on bass. It's such an honor for him to be with us on stage because he was truly the road warrior that helped us take this bit sound around the country. And uh, he was my backup. I was the hammer, but he was the backup hammer on the road with 11 special cats, you know what I'm talking about? But he's, he's another amazing musician. He runs and, or manages the real school in Burlington, Vermont. He plays with all the top guys on the scene today. An amazing musician. Ed Spargo on the bass. Ed Spargo! And of course, you know, he's gonna hopefully come out for one, more, one or two, or we might have something for him, but another guy who's just taken his talents and gone to the top of the world, and you know, he's written, he's written books, he's teaching at Berkeley, he's producing, he's a songwriter, the amazing Thaddeus Hogarth. Thaddeus, Thaddeus Hogarth. Other cat on guitar, um, Felix, man. There's, there's no words about this guy. We met him through Chakra, and that led to a lot of great things. Felix was a guy when we'd be on the road out in the middle of, you know, America somewhere, some youngins would come up to us with these little orange Tupperware containers and go, like, yo, man, do you know where Felix is? <laughs> he was a guru of certain things back in that day. <laughs> and after about a month on the road with my thinking, I'm gonna go with these guys and find Felix because it's a beautiful thing. But he's a great, great songwriter. 
an amazing human being, and again, this is an amazing guitar player, musician, Felix Richler. And on Bone, he was a big star when I first came to, to, to this town many years ago with Bim Scala Bim, and he was the horn player in all the new age and punk bands and reggae bands. And he's just, he's a star, man. Give it up. John Ferry. John Ferry. Yes! Always been. And my brother on uh, tenor and alto, we kind of got together and, you know, on, on the, these jams at Bun Ready's and we started talking and talking to David G. And he's like, hey, you guys got something here, man, but, you know, you should keep working with it. And I'm like, all right. So um, he's been the guy who helped get this thing off the ground in a whole lot of ways. John Vanderpool. Alpha <laughs> South <laughs> And uh, this next guy, man, as far as I'm concerned, he d defined the sound of the heavy metal horns. I don't know what would have happened if we never had this sound because he's a lead, he's a lead player, man. He's like, he's bad. I met him when he was like 18, and it took him a couple years to get my attention. The Grand Ice Big Band kept asking me, want to hang out? I was like, he was a kid. I'm like, dude, I got things to do. <laughs> After two years, he was like, yeah, yeah, Henley, you know, maybe we should hang out. I, I was on a cruise ship in Jamaica over the summer. Do you want to hang out? I'm like, bet, let's meet right after this rehearsal. <laughs> well, we got to play with them, and then I talked to John. I said, John, I got this kid, man, on trumpet. He's, yeah. he's ridiculous. Yeah. He goes, well, have him come down to the jam session. And he came out, and he put the mark and, made, and defined the sound of the heavy metal horns. Garrick Sadluck. Yeah. Kitsy! Thank you so much. My name is Henley Douglas Jr. Yeah. Henley! 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 Without a doubt, without a doubt, I'm the most blessed individual in this house tonight because of all you and because of all these guys coming out to play with me. Thank you. I love you too, brother.
dropping a brand new song on you that we just learned. Yeah. Written by Peter Kahlo. So you know, this is the part of time she goes, they're a brand new song. Hey, check this out.
to Tower Power 20 years ago and Garrett got to go and, and play and tour with them and you know we just want to send this out to the family of TLP and, and Mick Gillette's yeah. family because he passed a couple of days ago. So with all due respect, we love those guys. I grew up in the Bay Area. I felt those guys my whole life and uh, we're going to dedicate this to Mick Gillette and his family and the family of Tower Power. Oh. 
One more song for y'all, man. And we have Thaddeus to take this out right. Don't forget the merchandise table out there. There's a ton of stuff from all of us on the tables you have at the front door. And we're gonna have a little after party over Keontes afterwards for anybody who still got some energy. You guys got energy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, not you all. I'm talking about the band. You guys got energy? Yeah. Oh yeah, here we go. I wouldn't sit down for this one. Oh, no. 
Thank you so much, everybody. We love you all. Hey, you want us to do this again sometime? Yeah. <laughs>